Well, let's talk about this a little bit further. Joining us now from central London is Ruth Taylor, who's the Director of Operations at the Orchid Project, which is a charity solely focused on ending female genital mutilation. Uh, very good afternoon. Thanks so much for talking to us. Uh, the day uh, today has been marked as International Day of Zero Tolerance, and we have had an announcement of, of some new measures uh, to try to crack down on FGM in this country. Uh, the, the suggestion is that doctors should be able to flag up girls that they consider at risk on their health records. Is that something that you think is a good idea? Is it a step forward in your view? Good afternoon. And I think absolutely what we need to be seeing is um, support for girls and women who've experienced FGM to be able to talk to their doctors about what's happened to them. At Orchid Project, we need to, we're a little bit concerned that this could lead to women who already may not be exercising the best health seeking behaviours not exercising health seeking behaviours because they're nervous of talking to their doctors that it might get them or their families in trouble. But by and large, these sorts of measures are a good thing. Well, yes, I, I suppose that is one risk that people won't visit their doctors, as you say, and won't come forward. Is there also a risk of, of some people being prejudged and uh, assume that they might be guilty in the future before they've done anything wrong? Absolutely. And I think, as the doctor said on the previous segment, the thing that needs to happen is really more education about the harms that FGM does and also acknowledgement that it's a form of violence against women and girls but it's also a harmful social norm and because it's a social norm when parents cut their daughters they're doing it so they can fit in with their community so women who think that it is the best thing for their daughters they're not planning on mutilating them and causing them harm they're doing it because they want them to fit in so we really need quite a complex understanding of the issue in order to really ensure that we're providing the best care and support for people who are at risk. How big an issue is it in this country? I mean, it's quite a hidden crime, isn't it? Because people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to come forward about it. Do we, do we know how, the scale of it in this country? I think we don't really know the scale of it in this country. And I think the issue is that a lot of the data aren't strong enough. And sometimes the way in which the data has been calculated also isn't strong enough. Um, recent reports estimate that there's about 26,000 girls at risk and others have said that it's over 150,000. At Orchid Project we're really concerned with um, the fact that around the world there's 130 million women and girls living with the consequences and 3 million girls at risk each year just in Africa. So compared with the issue in the practicing countries in the African continent there's really far fewer in the UK. Obviously that doesn't mean we should be ignoring them and the government's funding as well as Bernardo's new work is really Welcome. Well, yes, and is enough being done? What would you like to see happen? What would we like to see happen? I think we would really like to see the international community investing a lot more in programmes to end FGM around the world. Um, our partner in West Africa has supported about 8,000 communities to end the practice, which means hundreds of thousands of girls from future generations who won't be cut. What we'd really like to see is governments coming together and supporting the growing movement in Africa, in West Africa and in East Africa, and also in practicing countries outside of Africa, where people are choosing to say no and to not cut their daughters. We'd really like to see the international community coming behind that and investing in it further. Ruth Taylor, uh, very interesting to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.